Alright guys, we are done with the design part of our project. Now it is time to implement the JavaScript part. So in this video we will make an API first and then dive into JavaScript. At first I am going to make a folder and call it client for the frontend. Copy all my frontend code inside it. Then I am going to make another folder and call it server for the backend and make a new JavaScript file inside it. So to make an API, we need to install a few dependencies. So I am going to open my terminal and navigate the server folder. Inside, I am going to write npm init-y to generate a package JSON. Now I am going to install express, notemon, and .env packages. Once we are done installing, you can see we have those packages inside my JSON. So in this project, I am going to use ES6 method. So inside package.json, I am going to write type module. Now I am able to import and export instead of require. Now inside the index.js, I am going to import express from express.env from .env. And now we are gonna invoke our express first and then that env.config. And after that, I'm gonna write app.use inside this parenthesis. I'm gonna write express.json because we are gonna need this JSON to display our data in the browser. Now let's make our first API request. So the first API request is gonna be get request. I'm gonna write app.get and my path, comma, request response, and inside this block, I'm gonna write response the send welcome to motor API, just to check if our API is working or not. Now to display this API in the browser, we need to listen to a port. So I'm gonna write listen to port. So after listen, inside this parenthesis, I'm gonna write port comma, arrow function, and inside this block, I'm gonna write console.log, server is connected to port, and this port variable. Now this port number is coming from my .env file. Up here, I'm gonna write const port, which is equal to process.env.port. Now, I'm gonna make a file and call it .env. Inside that, I'm gonna write port, which is equal to 5000. Now inside the terminal, if I write node index.js, you can see the console log messages printed over here. Now inside the browser, if I write localhost 5000, you can see that my message is printed over here. Now if I change something in my message, you can see that there is no update in the browser. For this cause, we have installed Nodeman to update automatically. So I'm gonna open my package JSON and change the test into start and Nodeman index.js. From now on, if I write npm start, our Nodeman will be compiled in the terminal. And if I change something, you can see that the message will be updated automatically. Now let's build our API. So I'm gonna write another GET request, but with a different path. The path is going to be API and product. I'm gonna write request response again, and inside this block, I'm gonna write response to status 200. 200 means that the request was successful. The JSON and inside this parenthesis data. Now I'm gonna make another folder and call that data. And inside it, I'm gonna have a file called data.js. And I'm gonna copy and paste all my data inside this file. Now I need to grab the data inside my index.js. And if I go to browser, 
and write API slash product, you can see all my data are printed in the browser. Now you have an API to display in your project. Okay, now let's go to the JavaScript and implement this API in our project. Now inside the client folder, I'm gonna have a new folder and I and call that JavaScript. Inside that, I'm gonna have a new file which is index.js and this file will hold all my JavaScript codes. Now I need to link this JavaScript file in my HTML. So I'm gonna write a script, search, and choose my path, and write this default because we write the script in the head of my HTML. All right, now inside the index.js, first of all, I need to grab all the elements that we need. I'm gonna comment it, and then we are gonna fetch the data from the API, then display the data, and store that in the local storage and then we need to display that in the browser now first of all let's grab the products div from html so i'm gonna write const product equal document dot selector and product now we need to fetch the data and put that inside this products div so I'm gonna write class fetch data and inside that I have an asynchronous function and I'm gonna name that get product. Inside that we are gonna have a try cat block and we need to fetch our data. So I'm gonna write const response which is equal to await and fetch inside this parentheses. I'm gonna go to the browser and copy this URL from my API. Once we are done with this, we need to write const data, which is equal to await response.json. So we need to invoke the JSON file. Now I'm gonna console log this data and console log if I have any error and we need to return this data too. Now down here to display in the browser, we need to write window.addEventListener. Inside this string, we need to write DOM content loaded and an arrow function. Inside this block, we need to make an instance of my class. So I'm gonna write const products, which is equal to new and fit data which is the name of my class now because we have an asynchronous function actually we can invoke that inside this so i'm gonna write products dot get products dot then i'm gonna get every product and if i write console log over here now let's check in the browser if the product is displaying i think we have an error the error state. Okay, this is because uh, we didn't install the course inside our API. That's why we are not allowed to fetch the data. So I'm going back to my API. And inside the terminal, I'm gonna install a new package called course. Then I'm gonna write app.use inside this parentheses course and of course I need to import that from the course library now you can see that my data are displaying in the console of the browser we are ready to display them in the DOM now to display this data we need to make a new class so I'm gonna write class display data and inside this, we need to have a function called display product. And get this product from the product that we have invoked inside the add event listener. Now I need to make a new instance for this class too. So I'm gonna write const UI 
equal to new display data. And instead of this console log, I need to write UI.display product and pass this product as a parameter to my function. Now, if I console log this product and get rid of this console log from here, you can see that we still have this product in the console. Okay, now I'm gonna display that in the browser. All right, now I'm gonna get rid of this console lock and instead I'm gonna write let products and then I'm gonna map through this data, get each single of the product and inside this block, I'm gonna return my HTML code. So I just go back to the index.html and copy this product div. Now I need to destructure everything from this product and all will come from product. Now let's change the HTML. So at first I'm gonna change the image and then I'm gonna change the title. For the description, we need to have a shorter description. So I'm gonna write description.substring and I want this to be printed from zero index to 44. Now I need to change the price. Now I need to comment out my HTML code and get rid of the extra quotes. You can see we don't have anything in the browser. Now I just copy this product down and down here I need to set the inner HTML of this product down equal to the variable that I have mapped my data inside. You can see we have displayed all the data in the browser. As you can see, we have some extra quotation mark over here. So to get rid of that, I need to wrap my products variable with parentheses and write dot join method. Now you can see we get rid of those quotation marks. Now let's implement the stars. So actually the stars will come based on the review of our clients. So what I need to do, I just get rid of some of my stars and just leave one of them. Inside it, I need to make a new array with the index of my review. So the review holds some numbers. And then I need to fill this array and map through. But the value will be nothing and we need this index. Inside this, inside it, we need to paste our span tag but inside template literal. Now you can see that we have stars based on our review numbers. So to get rid of this commas, I just write that join. Now you can see we don't have this commas anymore. All right, now let's implement the single product. So I go back to my HTML code and just minimize the product code. Now to display a single product, I just come back to the index.js and down here I need to make a new function and I'm gonna call that get single product. But first of all, we need to get all the buttons. So what I need to do, I need to make a new function up here and name that get button. Now to get the buttons from my cards, I need to, I need to set an event listener to all the product DOM. So I just copy this product DOM and inside it I need to set an event listener. And inside this parenthesis I need to grab the target. Down here I check if target.classlist.contents see product. You can see that the class name of my button is C product. Then we will control lock click. Now to display this button, I need to call this button in my window.addEventListener and pass this product to this function. And then we need to receive this data inside this get buttons. Now if I click this button, I think we have an error. That is because we didn't set a pointer event to noun to my icon. So so I just go back to the products, the CSS, and if you notice, I made a mistake here. 
So this is span, not a class span. So I get rid of this dot over here. Now you can see that the button is working perfectly. Okay, now I need to display the single data inside the browser. So I'm going to copy this function inside this add event listener and pass this data to this function. Now to compare the ID of the data with the button ID that we are clicking, we need to generate our ID. So how do we do that? First, we need to grab the ID, const btn ID, which is equal to target.dataset.id, and this ID will come from our button. Now let's give the ID to our button. Inside the HTML code, I just write data-id equal to ID. So this data-id will represent the ID of our product card. I need to pass this button ID to my function as well. Okay, now when I click the button, I want to show my product details page. So to do that, I need to add an active class to my single product. So I need to go back to the single product CSS and I need to add an active class. I need to add display flex to this. Now I need to grab this div inside my JavaScript. And down here, when we click the button, we want to add this active class to our single product div. Now if I click this one, you can see that my single product div will be pop up. Okay, now let's display the data. So I will pass this data. Now I'm receiving the data and the btn id in this function. And then we need to write const new card, which is equal to data that, that find. We need to grab the product and we need to check if the product.id is equal to btn id. I add this plus over here because the btn id that comes from HTML is a string. So this plus will change that into number. Now, if I console log this new card and click the button, you can see that I grab the ID 2. If I click the other one, you can see that I grab the ID 1. Now, let's display this data. So, I'm going to write a new variable, display single product, and template literal. I'm going to copy all my HTML code inside this template literal. So I go back to index.html and copy this code. Now you can see we don't have any data in the browser because we have commented. I just copy paste the structures from displaying product to not waste time. Now let's change the product to new card. So first of all, I need to change the image and then the title and then the description. We don't have to make a short using substring. And for the stars, I just copy and paste this code. I need to change the price. Now we need to display this in the browser. So first of all, I need to add a data attribute inside my product div because we have a bunch of product class name. We don't want to make a conflict. So I just write a data attribute inside it to grab in the JavaScript. And then I'm going to write single product DOM, which is equal to document.curly selector, and add this data attribute inside this. Now let's set the inner HTML of this div to our new product. So I write single product DOM dot inner HTML, which is equal to this variable. Now, if I click this button, you can see that my single product will be displayed. All right, now let's implement the close button. So I just grab this close class from HTML, grab it inside the JavaScript, and then inside the get buttons function, I need to set an event listener to the close and just remove this class. 
you can see if I click this, then the single product will be hiding. Now let's implement the add product craft. So I just comment here, just to specify this is my display single product and this one is going to be add to cart. So to add to cart we need to have an empty array. So I just go up here and write let cart which is equal to empty array and all my cart will be pushed to this empty array. So now I need to grab the add product class inside this product DOM. I just write if target dot class list that contains add product then I need to console log to check if it's working. You can see that my button is working perfectly. Okay now let's implement the logic. Now if you go to HTML code you can see that the class name of this button is add product. Okay now let's implement the logic. So I come down here and make a new function. I'm gonna call that add to cart. And then call this function over here using this because this means that this function exists inside this class name. Then pass this data into my function as well as we need to get the BTN ID as well. So I'm gonna pass this to now if you remember in the design part we hide the cart component. So I just go back to the CSS. I open the shop the CSS. You can see that we added the transform translate x to 25 frame. So we need to set an active class and set this transform back to zero. I just copy this and change the 25 frame to zero. Okay. Now let's grab this shop cashier inside JavaScript. I'm gonna copy this variable name and down here I need to add this active class list to this div. Now if I click this button you can see that the cart component is pop up. Now let's make it move smoothly. I just go back to the CSS and add a transition. Okay. Now it's looking much more great. Now we need to set an event listener to our shopping cart button because when we click that we need this cashier to be opened. So I just go to the HTML and copy the shop icon, grab it inside my JavaScript and down here I need to set an event listener. Make sure to write this under the buttons function. So I just write cart icon dot add event listener and just add a toggle to this active class. Now you can see if I click the button it will close and open my shopping cart. Okay now let's implement the logic for add to cart. So I just open the add to cart function and inside here we need to use the find method again. So I write const new product which is equal to data dot find. We grab the product and check if the product dot id is equal to btn dot btn id. Now if I console log this new product Make sure to always console log to check if your code is working. If I click, okay, it's showing undefined. Let's check. Okay, that's because you need to add this plus. Now, if I click the button, you can see it is working. Okay. Now it is time to push this data into our cart array. So I just write cart is equal to this empty array and inside that we need to grab everything from the cart, add a dot and add our new product. If I console log the cart and click this button you can see we have an item inside this cart array. If I click again another product you can see we have another product inside this empty array. Okay. 
now let's display this card so i just add the display function instead of this console log and down here i need to make that function and of course i don't need the data the data will come from the card array so i just write const card product which is equal to card.map we need to map through all elements inside the card and then return a template letter now let's go to the index.html and copy our shopping cart div so i just copy that and comment out inside my html you can see we have nothing in the browser and paste it inside this function one more time i need to destructure everything now i just replace them with the new data now we need to display this in the browser so to do that i just go back to the index.html and add a data attribute again to this div because this is a product div again okay so i just write it i i need to grab this inside the index.js now i need to copy this variable and down here i need to write the inner html of this div to cut product now if i click you can see that my product is displayed in the product div if i click one more product you can see we made a mistake okay we were not supposed to copy uh, only the elements of this product div so instead we need to copy all the product div so what i need to do i just go back to the html you can see that we have a remove all button and total prices inside this added products div so what i need to do i just move them one step down so it shouldn't be inside this div and now i just copy the data attribute and paste that in my parent div i need to comment this div over here and paste it inside the javascript now if i click the button we have the product okay now it is looking good but we still have this commas now let's get rid of this commas one more time i just use this join method you can see that we don't have those extra commas again okay now let's implement the basket counter so to grab the basket counter I just go back to the HTML and grab this counter class. And down here I need to make a new function and call that shop counter. And down here I need to write shop count dot HTML equal to cart length. So it will show how many items do I have inside the cart. Now I need to call this function down here using UI instance. But to be updated, I need to call this function under this add product button too. Now if I click, you can see this number is increasing. All right, now let's implement the local storage. So I just copy this comment and up here I just paste it. And then I need to make a new class. So the class is gonna be storage. And inside it, I need to have a function called set storage. So we just save the array items uh, using this function. So inside this function, I just grab the product. And then inside it, I just write local storage the set item. I need to set a key. And then we need to change this product to JSON stringify and we need to return this now i just copy and paste this function but change the name to get storage and this time i just uh, i just get rid of this json.stringify but instead i'm gonna wrap everything with json.parse and we do need this product 
so I forget to add a static keyword. I come back and write static in front of both my functions. So down here I just write storage.care storage and grab this product. Now to save the product inside the local storage, I need to go to add to cart function and down the cart I need to write storage.share storage and just pass this cart. Now if I inspect the website and click the button, you can see that we have a product inside the local storage. Now let's get this storage data. So how do we get it? I just get rid of this empty array and instead of that I just write storage.get storage or empty array. So it means whatever items or data we have inside the local storage, we just assign that to our cart. If there is a data inside, we want that data to be displayed. Otherwise, we want this empty array to be displayed. Okay, now as you can see, even though if I refresh the page, we still have those two numbers. It means that we have two items inside our cart. Okay, but if I open that, you can see that there is no cart displayed inside it. So to solve this problem, we need to call this display cart inside this add event listener. Now you can see that our cards are displaying. Okay, now let's implement the remove functionality. Now you can see that we have a remove button inside the HTML code. So to grab this button similar to other buttons, I just go back to the buttons function. And down here, I just write a comment first. And we need to set an event listener to shop cart. I'm gonna get the target. And now I'm gonna check if target.classList.contains my remove class, which is over here. I think it's better to give a class to the button itself. So for that cause, I just write delete class over here and give it a delete class in my HTML code. Okay, now let's check if the button is working or not. I just write console lock, product is removed. So let's check. You can see that the button is working. Now let's implement the logic. So I get rid of this console lock and just copy this button ID again. And now we need to filter. So I just write cart is equal to cart.filter. We need to grab the product. And if the product.id is not equal to button.id. But we don't have this button ID yet. So I just go back to the HTML code and write this data set assigned to the ID. So I grab the ID inside the structure and write it down here. Now I need to update my local storage. So I just write storage.set storage and pass this card. Now as you can see, if I click the remove button, my card is going to be removed. Now because we need to call these two functions over and over again, it is better to write them under one function and call them at once wherever we want. And then I need to make this function. So I write update the updates function and just paste this to function, but not using UI, but only I just write this instead of UI. Okay, now I just paste this updates instead of my functions name. You can see it is working perfectly. Now we need to set another functionality. So we want to say if, for example, the, there is no item inside the cart, we want the sidebar to be closed. So to do that, I just write an if statement under the updates. 
So under the update function, I'm gonna say if the card dot length is smaller than one, so we are gonna remove the class list of this card dump. Now you can see as soon as our cart is empty, this sidebar is going to be closed. Now let's implement the remove all button. So I just grab this remove all button from my HTML and down here under the buttons function, I just write a comment first and we need to set an event listener to this remove all. And inside that, we just assign the card to empty array and update our local storage. And also, we need to call this update because our display card, our DOM is exist inside this update. Now you can see if I add multiple products, my card is going to be empty and the sidebar is going to be closed. Okay, now let's calculate the price of my product. So I just come down here and write a comment. Then I'm gonna make a function and call that get total price. So to be displayed, I just need to call it uh, under the update because we need to update that once we add the product. And inside that, I'm going to first write a variable, which is equal to zero. And, and now to get the prices, we need to map through the card. And we just get the sum of our product price. Now to display the total price, I just get the total price from the HTML code. And now, I just write total price that inner HTML equal to total. But to get rid of the decimals, I just write dot to fix, and we want to display only two plus this dollar sign. Now you can see that we have our total prices down here. All right, guys, we are almost done. So the last thing which is left is increment product and decrementing the product. So you can see we don't have the buttons yet. Now let's add these buttons. So I just go back to the display product card and down the remove div, I just add a new div and call that buttons, btns. And inside that, I need to have two more buttons. So I just copy paste for two times this button and bring them up here. Now, between them, I need to add a span tag for the calculation of the increment and decrement. The, the value is going to be zero for now. And I'm just going to change the class names. Now for the icons, I just go to the phone awesome again. Now you can see we have those icons. So now let's style them. I go back to the shop.css. Under this remove class, I just get rid of this text align. And instead I'm gonna write display flex, align item center, and gap 3.8. Now you can see that they are beside each other and have a little gap between them. Now we need to add a little padding from the top. So I just go back to the CSS and write padding top to be 0.5. Okay, now they are looking good. All right, so now let's implement the logic for incrementing and decrementing. So I just go back to the shop card event listener and now I'm gonna look for increase class. Now let's check if that's working. Now if I click the button, you can see that if I click the icon itself, the button is not working. So to avoid this problem, I just go back to the CSS. We need to grab this remove button. 
and we need to grab this icon so inside that we need to set a pointer event to noun so now you can see that the icon is not entrapping the button anymore okay now let's implement the logic I just go back and get rid of this console lock and instead I'm gonna write a UI dot increment function now I just copy and paste this button ID again and pass this button ID to this function okay now let's make the function but we still don't have any quantity inside our product so to add the quantity I just go back to the add cart so to add this quantity we need to copy this new product and write an object so we get whatever we have inside the new product and add this quantity to it now if I console log this cart and add a new product you can see we have this quantity inside our product okay so I just come back to my function and get this btn id so inside it we need to map through our cart first of all I'm gonna get the quantity from product.quantity and now we need to check if the button id is equal to the product id if that is true then we want to increment the quantity and we need to return this all product and the quantity and also we need to update our local storage and update our UI okay we have a problem it is saying that invalid assignment to cons because we added this quantity to cons variable so I just come back and change the cons to let now if I console log this quantity you can see that my quantity is increasing okay now let's write this quantity inside the span tag I just come back to my HTML and get rid of this zero I'm gonna get the quantity inside the structuring and write it inside the span tag you can see if I click the button okay it's not working let's find out the problem okay the problem is we need to assign our card to this card map now if I click the increase button you can see that the quantity is increasing okay guys we got a problem in CSS when it reached to over 10 now let's solve this problem I just go back to the shop and we need to decrease this gap to three rings now it's looking good okay now let's implement the decrement button so I just copy and paste this button I just change the function name to decrement and down here I need to copy this function to change the name to decrement and now because we are decrementing we add this minus minus instead of the plus plus okay now I need to change the class name as well because we need to get the decrease class so if I check you can see that my quantity is decreasing once I click the minus button okay but we got a problem that now we don't want this quantity to be under 1 so it's going to 0 minus 1 now to solve this problem I just come back and set a condition I say if quantity is smaller than 1 I just set the quantity to be 1 so we don't want it to be 0 or minus 1 or minus 2 now you can see if I click the increment it's not going down one again okay all right now let's update our total price so once we are incrementing or decrementing we want the prices to be changed too so to do that we just go back to the gate total price and just write product price 
times product dot quantity. Now you can see whether we increment or decrement the product, the price is going to be changed. Okay guys, we are done with the incrementing and decrementing. Now we need to add a functionality that, for example, when we click a product from the bottom, we want to auto scroll up. I just go back to the JavaScript. And under this add product event listener, I just write window.scroll, the top to be zero, and the behavior we want it to be smooth. Now you can see if I add a product from the bottom of the page, the page is going to be scrolled up. Okay. All right, guys. So one more thing that we want to implement is a button disable. So what I mean is, for example, if I add a product, you can see I can add multiple products of the same card. So to get rid of this problem, we need to disable the button once the product is added. So now let's implement this disable button. I just go back to the JavaScript and under this get all buttons, we need to get the add cart buttons, but add it inside this array and spread operator because if we don't add this spread operator, we will get not list buttons and that will not work. Now we need to make a disable button function and pass this all buttons inside it. Now let's make the function, grab this add products. Now we need to look through all the buttons get single button and we need to use the find method to check if the product with this ID exists inside our cart or not. So I just write let cart exist the name of my variable and cart.find. I'm gonna check if the item that ID is equal to the button ID. Now we need to set a condition. So we say if the card exists, if the card with this ID exists inside the card, then we add this disable button to our button, okay? Otherwise, we, we are going to remove that. So I just come back to the product CSS. We need to style the disable class. Write pointer event to noun. And we are going to write a background color for this. Okay, now we need to call this function. At first, we need to call this under this add product event listener because when we add a product, we want this class to be applied to our button. Secondly, we need to add this under the remove single product event listener. Because when we remove a product, we want this class to be updated. As you can see, as soon as I click the button, the background is going to be changed and the button is not clickable anymore. Okay, I think it's working perfectly. Now let's implement the search bar. So I just add a class to my search input and now I'm going to grab that inside my JavaScript and down here we need to make a new function for the search. So I'm going to write search product function and inside it we need to set an event listener to our search bar. The key is going to be input. We need to get the target and inside it we need to first get the value of our input. Now we need to filter our card but at first we need to get the data inside this function and then I'm going to write data that filter. I'm going to get product and inside this block I just return product.title.lowercase that includes value. Now let's update the display product and call this new update 
variable inside it because we want to update our display product function. Now let's call this sys product function. I'm going to call that and pass this product to it. And to update, we need to call this update function again. Now, as you can see, whatever I write inside this search bar, it's going to be displayed in the DOM. Okay, now let's implement the debouncing inside this search bar. So, debouncing is a concept that adds a delay to your function execution. So, to do that, we need to go to a library called Lodash. So, I'm going to search for Lodash in the browser. Open the Lodash website. You can search for the bouncing. You can see that it has a lot of things to do inside. You can read more about it inside the Lodash website itself. But I just need this code. Okay, now let's get the CDN of the Lodash. I'm going to copy and paste it in my HTML code. And now I just select all this code, copy it and delete them. Instead, I'm going to write a new function. Let delay is equal to underscore dot debounce, which is coming from the Lodash library. And other function and this block comma in here we need to specify how long do we want to set delay between the execution of our function inside this block i just paste my code and now i'm gonna call this delay function now you can see if i search for a product it will add a delay between my searching and displaying the product Alright guys, that's it for today's video. You have a fully functional shopping cart using object-oriented programming. You can add a product, increment and decrement the product, remove the single product, remove all the product. And we have implemented the search bar using the debouncing method. And finally, we have added all the products inside the local storage. I hope this video was helpful for you, please make sure to like the video and give a subscribe to my channel. See you in the next video.